Her Honor, the Lieutenant Governor. Please be seated. Working together, working for you. Good afternoon. We begin by honoring the sacredness and importance of these lands and waters and of the ancestors that once walked where we are standing today. We, we recognize the Anishinaabeg, Cree, Dene, Dakota, Métis, Inuit, and Anishinaabe nations who paved the way to what is now known as Manitoba home to all who are treaty people. 
This acknowledgement is a reminder of our histories and the original homeland of those nations which have become, to all of us, become home to all of us today. Our government also wants to acknowledge the people of Manitoba are great people who have come together to do great things in our history. We have shown the rest of Canada that Manitoba can be a leader, a leader in clean energy, a leader in the arts, and our plan will make us a leader in fixing health care. We must recognize that the great things in our province have always been protected by our brave service people who have stepped up to fight to defend our freedoms, our liberty, and the very democracy we practice in this chamber. We are mindful of the sacrifices they made so that each of us here in Manitoba can contribute to our democracy. Voting is an important way that we pay tribute to those sacrifices. Our government will always honor the bravery of veterans, first responders, and those in active service. Working together, there is optimism in our province, for it is a new day for Manitoba. Manitobans elected our government to bring people together to solve the challenges we face as a province, from record wait times for health care to rising costs for families and a homelessness crisis that is visible across the province, in our downtowns, in rural communities, and across the north. Manitobans elected our government with a mandate to leave no one behind. You have asked us to be a government that will work together with business leaders, workers, community organizations, and all orders of government to make life better for Manitobans. Our mandate is drawn from the stories we've heard over the last two terms in this legislature. The nurse who was exhausted after health care cuts and worried for her patients. The blue collar worker who feels he's lost his freedom when his paycheck disappears under ri rising gas prices and higher hydro bills. The family in rural Manitoba who has to drive hours to get health care they need. The senior who doesn't feel safe in her home at night. The parents who want their children to find good careers right here at home and to not have to leave our province to find opportunities. These are our stories. We are working to implement the mandate we received from you by working together with the public servants who share our commitment to make life better for all Manitobans. We will value their work and listen to their expert advice. Whether as snowplow drivers, conservation officers, mechanics, or civil servants in this building, these hardworking professionals are the people who will turn our shared vision into a reality for all of us. To the public service, we thank you for getting us through difficult times. It is time for a government that works with public servants instead of against them to deliver results for you, the people of Manitoba. Working for you. Our government is already delivering on our commitments to Manitobans. In one of our first acts, we reached out directly to Manitobans working in our health care system today. We committed to being a listening government and shared our plan to reset the relationship with healthcare staff on the front lines. Our team is launching a healthcare listening tour, which will hear from the staff at the bedside across the province. We will hear directly from Manitobans who care for you at the bedside. We are fulfilling our commitment to reduce bureaucracy in healthcare by returning oversight of all surgical and diagnostic procedures back to the government's health department and focusing funding on public health care delivery in Manitoba. We have taken steps to address the immediate crisis in health care and reduce wait times. We are opening 10 additional surgical slates for surgery at the Grace Hospital and expanding the spinal surgery capacity at the Health Sciences Centre, Concordia Hospital, 
and the Brandon Regional Health Center. Taken together, these investments will reduce wait times and help patients move from emergency rooms to wards where they can get the care they need. We are also reducing the MRI wait list and giving Northern families better access to health care with a new mobile MRI unit for Northern Manitoba. We are working with all levels of government to solve the challenges we fa are facing together. In healthcare, we secured a commitment from premiers across Canada to work together to fix the staffing shortage and, sure, and ensure that they do not poach Manitoba's healthcare workers. We have already unlocked $500 million in new investment with the federal government to deliver low carbon, reliable and affordable electricity to people and businesses across the province and, our, and expand our electricity grid while creating good family supporting jobs for Manitobans. Together, we will ensure Manitoba becomes a leader in the low carbon economy of tomorrow. Today, we are proud to announce that we have a commitment from the federal government to work with us on our plan to help families make the switch to affordable geothermal home energy. This collaborative approach will help us deliver on our commitments to reduce emissions, lower costs for families, and create more low carbon jobs. We will deliver on this commitment while bringing blue collar Manitobans along with us, training people this year to install geothermal heat pumps for families across Manitoba. In all of the decisions our government makes, we will include the voices and needs of rural Manitoba. With our new Westman, Westman Cabinet Office in Brandon, we will give families in Westman, the parkland, and surrounding communities a direct line to our government. We are making life better for working families. We ended the strike we inherited from the previous government with a deal that is fair for workers at Manitoba Public Insurance and also responsible to ratepayers. We sent a clear message to Indigenous governments across Manitoba. We are ready to work with you. With the Premier's appointment as the Minister of Indigenous Reconciliation, as well as the Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, our government will reset the relationship with Métis, Inuit, and First Nations leadership in our province. In the spirit of working together, we removed the prohibition that prevented Manitoba Hydro from dealing directly with Indigenous governments and we are advancing economic reconciliation by working with the leadership of the Treaty One First Nations as they tra transform the former Capion Barracks into the residential and commercial development of Nawe Odana. We have begun to honor our commitment to search the landfill for the remains of Mercedes Myron, Morgan Harrison, and Mushkode Bishke Ikwe Iban. Our first step was welcoming their families into the legislature, where we promised that no government in Manitoba will ever, the, will ever use the families of murder victims as political props again. And as winter quickly approaches, we worked with community organizations to help shelters across Manitoba operate 24-7. In just one month, we have, uh, we have accomplished these important things by working together with you, the people we serve. The work ahead. The road ahead will surely have challenges. 
Many commitments the previous government made did not fit with a sustainable approach to the province's finances. These decisions have left Manitoba in a financial challenge. This does not deter us from fulfilling our mandate to balance the budget at the end of this term in office, but it will require that we act responsibly and stabilize the province's finances. With a new government and a new mandate, we will be good stewards of our province's books. Our government will be fiscally responsible while investing in health care, education, and communities across the province. The path forward will take time and hard work, but we are optimistic because we know the, the way we do difficult things in Manitoba is by working on them together. A new vision for health care. It is time for a new vision in healthcare. Choosing to work in healthcare is an act of love. At the heart of our healthcare plan is a commitment to take better care of Manitobans who take care of us, those Manitobans who are working on the front lines of our healthcare system. The wealth of knowledge and experience of our frontline workers will inform our decisions in healthcare. Our government will foster a culture of open and transparent communication. We will prioritize the expertise of the front lines and reduce the burnout caused by excess bureaucracy. We will set out clear goals to improve our system, work with the front lines on those commitments, and hold management accountable to improve things for you, the patient. Our commitment to the front lines of healthcare is to improve retention and recruitment by creating a culture in healthcare in Manitoba that respects nurses, doctors, allied healthcare professionals, aides and support staff by respecting their decision-making powers, their expertise, and empowering them to do what's best for you, the patient.